Um, I'm going to talk about, I must apologise to start with, because the technology that I've been involved in is nowhere near as dramatic and uh, effective as, as, as Dan's just spoke about. But it's a whoop, wrong way, even. It's looking at using apps and technology in, in the local environment. And this is a, a small project that, that's blooming as we speak uh, that ran with South Devon A and B, so area of outstanding, um, area of outstanding natural beauty, in terms of how we engage more with stakeholders and in the planning and protection process. So what I'm hoping to cover quite quickly is give you a bit of background behind the app, why we did it, what the purpose of it was, a bit about some of the process we went through, which was the geocaching, then how it obviously developed, how it works, and the future, really, for, for that. So if I start off with just explaining what I mean by landscape, it's quite an old diagram, but I think it's really quite effective, especially when you're talking about European multidisciplinary projects, because as you can see, you've got a wide range of subject areas that are covered when you think about a landscape holistically through to the, to, to the softer issues, to, to, the, to the hard science, geology, and soils at, at the top there. So it's important to think about landscape in that, in that way. Um, landscapes in, the, in, in England are obviously managed in protected landscapes. 26% of England is, is, is covered in protected landscapes. And when I say England, I do mean Cornwall, even the, the, the new delegation. <laughs> And so, by those landscapes, they're, they're run, obviously, by national parks or A&Bs, uh, areas of outstanding natural beauty. I've been working very closely with the local areas of outstanding natural beauty to see how we can help them monitor and feed back in. They have to produce management plans every five years to receive their funding from DEFRA. And as you can imagine, funding is shrinking, and they need to carry on doing those types of things. So one way was to think how we engage with the stakeholders, with the community, to, to get more information that can help make proper management plans that are sustainable and that are worthwhile. So going back to the landscape model, the top issues are very, relatively easy to measure in the monitoring process and what, what goes on, and we've been involved in the monitoring for the A and Bs. Every five years they monitor these key aspects of uh, biodiversity, landform, all those types of things, and report back and show how they've been enhanced or, or have they been preserved. So that's relatively straightforward. We've come up with monitoring protocols. Um, which we've rolled out, and yet yesterday I went to the launch of the Helping Hands project, which is running in the Tamar AMB, which is a national uh, lot uh, heritage lottery grant that they've received to embed some of these methodologies we've developed into the local community, and those were rolled out. That was already straightforward. If you move down to the bottom of the chart, where you're talking about feelings and smells and uh, touch and feel and all those sort of things that are pretty difficult to, to measure, how can we engage, how can we engage with, the, with the communities on those? So the feeling was, let's look at some of these new technologies, let's look at apps and see, see how we can do this. And the diagram shows, I'll say, what we were hoping to achieve. But before we jumped in and started down the line of, of developing an app, we went to the process of, of geocaching. So I don't know if, if, if you're all aware of, uh, of geocaching, but this is uh, originally from the US military, where they used to hide the resources before they went in and, and they could find them. It's now developed into a, into a worldwide uh, game, almost, where people hide little boxes, run around the countryside, open the box, and give and take things. Obviously, there's a particular type of population that undertake this type of activity, and we're, we're conscious of that when, we'd, when we did this, but we thought there's a mechanism that we can actually use this. So we came up with a number of questions that we put in the box about the landscape and what people felt. We hid some sound sticks, so USB sound sticks that are as little as £10, put those in so people could make recordings about what they were feeling or what they were hearing, and disposable cameras so they could record images. All went in the box, put them out within the South Devon landscape and saw what happened. Um, and it was very successful. The, the, the geocaches, this was, this was two years ago, the geocaches are still out there and still recording data and the South Devon still go back to them. We've also set up a similar thing in the Tamar, Tamar Valley. People get an opportunity to comment on in the, in the um, I've got one minute to go, in the box itself, but you can also go online and do that as well. So we scratched our heads, and I must say that anyone who's got children in the nursery, uh, scratching my head had nothing to do with the uh, infiltration of uh, head, head lice at the time. <laughs> Purely coincidental. So we scratched our heads and then thought a bit about developing an app. I won't go into the app there in terms of where we got to, but eventually we came up with a thing called Rate My View. And this is a bit of a shameless pug for Rate My View. It was basically an app that allows people to go into the, out into the landscape, um, take a picture, so you use the camera on your phone, it locates where you are on the map, you can then, you can then star your rate to your view in terms of one to five stars. We then asked you to identify what you're seeing, what you think about the view with, with, with three, phases, uh, with three uh, phrases, and then there's a bit of an open text to ask you what you thought. And we do create a bit of demographic information about age group, 
and uh, how well you know the area. Uh, you submit that, that goes off um, to our webpage, ratemyview.co.uk. So all log on and have a look at that. Images are shown straight away with comments and those sorts of things. Obviously, we do, we do uh, make sure that we've uh, make sure there's no obscene pictures going up. So we do manage that process before they go up onto the web. You can see that that goes up. People can have a look and share information. But more importantly, we have a we have a backend database which you then can pull off these images, pull off the text, and start to feed that into the management plan of the AOMB and how that can how that can go forward. So just briefly summing up. Um, that's the web page. Just to finish off the future, obviously we wanted to make it sustainable. We don't want this as a one-off project that, that happens and then disappears. Uh, the market, as I said, is, is the AOBs across, across England, but also Scotland and, and Wales, so similar thing. We came up with a value that's, that's, that's not beyond the budget of a normal AOMB. We're hoping to set up a community interest-based company that will then, any funds that come from, the, from, the, from buying into the app, the app's free to download, but obviously to use the back-end database there will be that charge for the, for the protected landscape. To set up a community-based company that we can then develop other tools that we, we have up our sleeves to, uh, to take that forward and make it sustainable and feed back into stakeholder consultation. And that's me, and lunch is ready, I suspect. <laughs>